All right, Pat. What did uh, what did you make of your Star Tribune colleague? So Jim Suhan sat down with Joe Polad. Yes. And and, uh, and and he kind of like the the setup to the quote was 30, 40 years of Polad ownership, and they've they barely fire managers, they barely fire GMs. You know, Tom Kelly got mm-hmm. eight years of losing, and and Jim said, "Is your staple Joe also going to be patience?" And Joe paused or hesitated, as Suhan wrote, and said, well, I did just talk about urgency, so I guess we'll see. What did you think of uh, that? I thought that uh, this guy is, uh, this is his job, running the Twins. Uh, it was never Jim Polad's, as Judd and I talked about. It. it was never Carl's job. If you wanted to Carl, you went over to the bank office, right, and, uh, yep. and uh, they talked to him, and Carl would look at the bottom line and see what was going on. And Jim was uh, Jim was his father's son. He was, uh, in, in fact, as the Polad brothers went, he was probably the quietest of the three. The, uh, you know, Bobby, Bobby, who is Joe's father, is more kind of an animated guy, more likely to get emotional. Uh, but he was running other parts of the business. And uh, and uh, so this is the first Polad. We don't know because this is the first Polad we've had who actually is – all, all he does now is run the twins. So, uh, and then, and, you know, he's there every day. That's, that's, I think that's where his office is. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's a different world and, uh, he's probably by nature a little more impatient. And, uh, so yeah, he's, uh, it's not going to be the same. I don't think, I think he'll be more, I don't know, proactive is the word, but, uh, I think he will be less patient. Don't you? Maybe he'll be and, more. And maybe he'll be more reactive. Than... Especially, especially when you see uh, the uh, you know the the money that is now invested in this operation with these these incredible millions that uh, Falvey has spent creating this this uh, fully uh, staffed. Uh, place over there with coaches, uh, the incredible number of minor league people, incredible number of uh, guys walking around with iPads, uh, you know, uh, figuring out everything. So uh, the investment is greater than it's ever been, not only beyond on the field, but in the, you know, in, in employees, they have an incredible number of employees now. And he, I, I'm sure that his partners who are his dad and his brother and his other brother and his, his uncle, his dad, his uncle and his other uncle, old Bill isn't much involved at all, a movie maker but why, they're looking at the bottom line saying what the, what are we spending all this money for? So I, I think yes, I think there's a very good chance that something will change at the end of this year. I told you know, I, I if this continues, Rocco, Rocco, Rocco will get fired, I think. I'm not, I'm not campaigning for it but uh uh he's more likely to go than falvey is so hmm. yeah. And, yeah and joe was in on fa- hiring falvey you know joe was i wouldn't say he was in on it but he was in the meetings that's when he first kind of surfaced as uh you know by then the radio station had been ruined and uh and he had he that was Declan's uh, fault actually yeah, yeah Declan yeah, yeah. got fired and, and, like, and by the way Falv to. actually that was that was before the radio station was ruined Falvey came to the radio station shortly after that and did a sit down with all of us so actually I remember that vividly but that was that was right before <laughs> the radio station that, hit the deck right. okay? the, 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 the wall the writing yeah. was Joe, on the wall <laughs> Joe knew that Joe knew that his knew. future was not yes. as a radio magnet okay so uh uh and that's when he first started taking that they kind of let him uh, people who were in the he was part of the interview process that hired Falvey uh, him him St. Pete and then I'm sure Jim had to give approval, but uh, he's you know he's running the team so and he's going to be by nature more in, in, impatient so yeah I they're not going to if they go 78 and 84 and finish third in the crappiest division in the history of baseball with all they've invested in this team, there will be changes. I got a hunch Falby will survive, but I don't think, you know, so it's, it's much easier in baseball to fire managers and stuff like and the coaches and stuff like that. But I mean, I do, and, and Falvey, the other quote from Falvey that stood out was he, 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 well, this is, this was aside from the, the newspaper interview. 
he was asked about making a trade for a bat or adding some help, and he said, well, it's ultimately going to be on the 26 guys in that clubhouse, and I'm kind of paraphrasing here. I don't have it in front of me, but he said, he said, we need the guys that we, we need the engine that we built to be the sum of the parts, basically. Mm-hmm. He's saying yeah. that, hey, we built a good engine. It's the, you know, guys like Correa just aren't hitting the way that they ordinarily would. So he, he seems to believe that it's not a foul that problem. That a- that a, that's a Joe Polhead quote, not a Falvey quote. Sorry, a, a Falvey quote. That's a Falvey quote. A Falvey quote. quote. Okay. He talked before the game, too. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. Falvey does think he's built a good engine, and he's wrong. But uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's that's the way it, that's the way it goes. That Falvey's it, – it's going to be easier for uh, all of them if they just, you know, they keep – if you get if you fire Falvey, uh, you got to go find somebody or you got to promote somebody. I don't think it'll be Thad. So uh, you got to you got to start all this machinations all over again, and uh, you know. But if I was going to do it, I, if I replaced Falvey, I'd hire some guy who said, "Here's the deal: I can get rid of 100 employees for you. <laughs> I'm going to trim this baby down because we got way more people walking around here with iPads than we need. So uh, <laughs> and 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 we got way more coaches than we need over in uh, you know." Every team doesn't need a, a, a sports therapist and stuff like that. So I, I don't know what I do. But, yes, it's not – Joe Polad is doing this for a living. So, yeah, it's going to be different, you know. He's – how many how many games do you think Jim went to a year? 30 maybe? Maybe 30? I could – I mean, he, he would go this, sit up in the, you know, in this the kid's, owner's – This box. kid's going to 81, right? He's going to 81 unless he has a big – Big party out on Lake Minnetonka some weekend or something, but uh, uh, he's, he's this is his life, so yeah, he's going to do something. I, do I think, think, Patrick. Do you, do you think though that so like th- this team now is is what a game under five hundred, half a game out. They're not very good, but they are in a perfect position, and they've got pitching. Do we really think they're going to do nothing here? Like we we talked about this. Like I understand. You know, Rocco gets blown out after the season, but I find it hard to believe that they're just going to sit here and do nothing right now. Uh, Something. Well, you know? I, I think they're going to, I think they're going to change some of the personnel that they have with guys that they already have in St. Paul. I think they're much more likely to uh, see a couple of minor league guys than you are to see some kind of a blockbuster trade to assist this team to bake it in the playoffs so they can lose three games and go home. I, I'm not going to see, you know, the, the idea. Now, I you got a couple of Goldsmith guys in the studio there with you, but uh, don't you? But uh, yep. that's yep. – I'm not, I'm not giving we, up. We we uh, we enjoy the uh, the the rumblings of his bat. Yes, Paul. I'm not there. giving up four. Uh, I'm not giving up four players for four of my minor leaguers for him. So nothing can happen. I mean, I love him. He's a great hitter, and he's uh, you know he's he's having a good year. Hitting a lot of home runs. Hey, a lot of home runs. That's what we need. But uh, yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not investing that way in this team. Sorry. And I think like the, the Goldschmidt exercises, I mean, yeah, we could like have a Goldschmidt conversation, but it's more about, okay, you've been trying to win for several years and here you are again, you got a pitching staff, you're within, it's a bad division, but you're, you're right there in a division race. If, if you're not in a position organizationally to add pieces, then what are we doing here? Like what, like it's more of a big picture conversation about then what do we, what are we yeah, doing? And here's the problem. They can't do Baltimore and pair down because they got Correa and Buxton. You can't move Perea's contract and Buxton's got no trade. So you can't they have, they have one movable it. asset, Sonny Gray. Yeah. And that's, they're not, nobody's going to break the bank for you. You know, somebody's going to, you know, somebody will give you a good prospect and a player if you want it. They can give you, you know, somebody for the bullpen or something. But yeah, I, they, they'll probably trade him. I'm going to say if they're, you know the, you know the, the they they have uh, already won uh, here by giving up, right? <laughs> they 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 got uh, they they were the guys who got Jaime Garcia, right? And they, so they, Jaime Garcia for yeah. one start, and then you they know, turned around a week later waited, and traded him and Brandon him Kinsler. Week, well, they gave up a week later, and then 
then Dozier and the boys got mad and said, "Let's mm-hmm. start playing and show these guys." Yeah, Molly and they ended up they ended up winning the division with Molly. That was with Molly, though. Yeah, uh, wild card. There, yeah. they got to the, they got yeah. didn't they get to the coin flip wild card game? Yeah, against they got the Yankees, right? They got they. Oh. they that was the Yankee game when they got three in the top of the first, right? Yeah. And then, um, and then the momentum changed. <laughs> well, then it's like they knocked out Luis Severino in the first inning, but then the Yankees yeah. ran like eight flame throwing relievers at them the rest of the night. <laughs> Pretty yeah. much a wrap. <sighs> but yeah, I don't know. I think uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it it is as we said yesterday. They have wasted more good starting pitching than any team in franchise history for them to the, the starting pitching is not going to be this good. The last, uh, the last 71 games of the season. It's not, it's just gonna, it's, you know, we've seen the peak of their starting pitching and it has resulted in being one game under 500. So yeah. it's, uh, it's, it, it's going to boy be a, uh, Season of uh, of uh, a disappointment again for sure, but the, with the with the kid in the, in the job, something will change. Though so they're not going to just roll it back. You're not going to have you're not going to have him come in and say, "I give everybody an A plus after they fall on their ass." So uh, I, I don't think he's going to do that. I forgot so, about that. <laughs> lifetime contracts for everybody. Yes. Oh God. An so, A plus, great, great work by Shooter, drawing the uh, the A plus grade out of Jim Polat a couple of years ago. Yeah, great. well, Jim was, you know, Jim hired. He said, "Yeah, okay, we'll hire these guys, and he's going to put them in charge." You know, they. I mean, how bad did it have to get for Terry to get fired by Jim? I mean, that was. And I think part of that was even Terry was like, "Okay, yeah." I, well, that was going to be Paul, right? They, I, I think that they basically said, "We're going to fire Paul or Terry," and Terry said, "Make it me." Mm-hmm. I'm not sure about that. Oh, okay. that's sure. that's what I, I think. I think they called Terry in, and they told Terry he was not going to be back at the end of the season, and he said, "Let's do it now." In yeah. the middle of the season, he wanted to give Robbie a chance to see if you know he could somehow do something that would allow them to you know come out of their coma, and that, you know, so he wanted to give Robbie a chance. But uh, and Rob is still there, right? Yeah, Bobby but in the, completely whatever. I never see him at the in the press. He didn't wander through the press box anymore. I don't know where he's going. I might he may might be going home at five. I don't know. They have him shuffling papers or something. He's probably I don't know suite, what they're doing, Pat. That, I don't know where they are going now. The suite. Yeah, yeah, I don't know where they are. Somebody we'll talk to the media. Somebody former employee asked me the other day. He said, "Where do they put all those guys with the uh, iPads in the offices up there?" I said. We don't go to the office, you know, back at the old days, you'd wander into the office, but you don't do, we don't do that anymore. If, if you want to get Derek, he comes to the press box. They all come to the press box. Now I, I don't even know where their offices look like. I've never been in them. I don't think so. Like it's, uh, it's, very, it's very nice over there. I was over there one time. They let, when I covered the twins, like 2013 draft, I want to say, and they brought the beat writers into a conference room by their offices because they had like a war room. Very nice views of downtown Minneapolis. Yeah. Very nice views cool. of uh, of the ballpark. Very nice. You're on but, top. but 2013, 2013, they had about 30 percent as many employees too. You know, they had a lot of room over. There. They had a lot of elbow room. They had to create little. There's got to be a lot of cubicles now because with the number of people they've added is incredible. Yeah, they catered so, Jimmy John's dinner for the for the media. Okay. It was great. Oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah, really, uh, Jimmy and turkey John's? sandwich. Yeah, it's yeah. Good. There's nothing that's wrong with a good nothing wrong with a good Jimmy John. No, no that's the, I love the chips at Jimmy John's too. You know, a lot of different. different <laughs> oh, there's a good selection of chips. None yeah. good for okay. you, but yeah. Say, sure. I uh, I went to the uh, Twin Cities Pro Am last night, and the uh, basketball uh, league that they have over at Minnehaha. They run for five weeks, three nights a week. They started Saturday, but they have uh, six teams. But they got a, you know, Nathan Knight wasn't there last night, but he is. The the Jones brothers have a team that they show up later in the year. Neither of them were last night. Mike, but you know, was out there battling his rear end off. Mike Muscala, oh, yeah. he he must have played. They they played forty minutes yeah. and then they played one hundred and fifteen. After that, forty minutes is over. If they if they get to one hundred and fifteen, 
I think the game's over. But they even if it's 40 minutes, because the game was like 102.96, and then they played to 115 after it was over. And but they got a lot of if you look at the rosters, uh, they got you know they got college players, some guys that you know Rashad Vaughn is playing, and guys like this that uh, around. Mike, Mike Muscala might be the most sort of under the radar, nondescript. 10 year former like Minnesota homegrown <laughs> yeah, NBA I think player. That, I think the Celtics just gave him a two year extension. I think I read he that. He did. Yep. But he, but yeah. he was out there fighting for every rebound, man. He must be an addict. He must be <laughs> one of those hoops addicts, man. But it's an interesting crowd these old these, you know, you got you know, you got the girlfriends and that too, but you also have these hoop heads, you know, these guys that just just a chance to watch some hoops in the summer over there at the Minnehaha. No, uh, no admission. I, you know, people just walk in. But uh, it was it was pretty good. They play a five, five and seven on uh, on uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. So it's uh, you know, if you show up, you'll see some guys you've 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 seen before. You know, there's you know the the PA could use considerable improvement because they don't really tell you who's doing what too well, but it's, it's, it's kind of fun. You know, these guys like Muscali is seven feet tall, just kind of a role player came in the league. He went to, uh, he was Roseville high school and then went to Bucknell, I believe. And they find out pretty quick after a couple of years, you better learn how to shoot some threes or you're not going to be, he's, so he's become a dead eye, like 40% three point shooter. I'm wondering (laughs) at Roseville and Bucknell, how many three point attempts did did he take? Yeah, they probably, (laughs) Probably would have gotten screamed at if he did that yep. to the three then. Now it's, but he's, you know, he's a guy that can sit for two weeks, right? And then he, he would have been a perfect Tibbs guy. Those guys that he sat for three weeks and then played 21 minutes, you know, for yeah. a couple of games. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, weird. Who else was there? Who did, uh, oh, uh, Sims, the Jericho, Jericho Sims is yeah. in the league. He wasn't there last night, but he's, he's on a roster. So a lot of them show up like a little later, in the, you know, cause they have the five week, they have four weeks and then they have the playoffs. So column coming the month of July. Who? I said, do you have a column coming off of this? It sounds like a column. Yeah, but it's on a different individual, but it's not, it's not about that. But, the, the, but I, I mean, it's, it's, it's about a guy who's playing in that league, but it's not. Yeah. Joe, where's your outrest? So Rudy Gobert is going to play basketball for the next month. Uh, if you were covering uh, the Celtics, would you be outraged that Mike no. Muscala no. is playing? <laughs> God bless him. No. Yes. This What's the, why not? What's the difference? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's Mike Muscala. He should be playing. <laughs> I, you know what? I think Rudy can go over there and work on his shot. It'll be a lot better you know, with French. How about his hands? Yeah, work on catching passes first. The big, it's too bad that the French team, if the big kid was playing for them with Gobert, that might be kind of, maybe they could show us how that works. <laughs> you know, how yeah, that is. Wemby, you know? Wemby was a little shaky in summer How league, about that? Man. His first his first game was like broken down like it was game six of the NBA yeah. finals. Yeah. He was really bad. You know, he was but like he, nervous. Or you what know what he is? Was expecting it. He's got the same frame as Chad Holmgren, too. Yeah. Who's who's out there? But uh, you know he's he needs a sandwich. He even needs a Jimmy John. Give that send that yeah, guy a Jimmy John. <laughs> tell him tell him to not leave until he eats about five. So you know <laughs> and but, some chips. They're good. <laughs> yes, make sure a lot of chips because damn he's skinny. But uh, <laughs> but they're only they only let him play two games. Now he's done. They're not having him play the rest of the summer league. So yeah, they, nice they must. How about Pop signing a five year deal? He's like signed till he's eighty now. It's crazy. Yeah, Pop. They must have. He must have got tired of reading. Well, when are you going to quit, Pop? So he said, "I'm I'm signing for five years. I'm going to quit whenever I want to because I run this franchise." And once again, the million dollars a year. What's the NBA? Once the NBA again fixed the lottery in my behalf, so I'm going to coach again here some more. They about every you know the ten years later, they twelve years later, they need to fix the lottery for pop again so they did it. yeah but, uh, it's amazing the nba bias toward these big markets like san antonio, <laughs> san antonio. Uh, rigging, rigging and Atlanta. pop pop you know <laughs> pop's been terrible how about uh, the patrick gerald story wow unbelievable yeah that kind of came out i mean talk yeah. about a guy going know. from being heralded as a great leader of men and then all this comes mm-hmm. out God. they just build him a 200 and some million dollar facility on the lake for mm-hmm. football 
on the lake, the greatest facility ever. Now he was four and 24 and 20 the last two years. But uh, the, it is also great that in the week that the LA Times and the New York Times gave up on sports reporting, the Northwestern student newspaper uh, did yeah. this. You know, it's basically yeah. the reporting of the Northwestern student newspaper. That's now, amazing. some of this stuff, telling a kid to get a haircut 13 years ago is, uh, you know, that's, you know, it was a little different view of telling a kid to get a haircut 13 years ago. I don't think anybody thought it was blatantly racist if you told the kid to cut his dreadlocks off 14 years ago. But now it is. So. Yeah, I think some of the other stuff, like the, well, the, the hazing, hazing stuff is the... Is the oh, hazing is the bad stuff, yeah. yeah. yeah if, I mean, if, if indeed the coaches were, uh, you know, endorsing that or not laughing at it, football is... I mean, football, there's got to be a lot of old coaches very nervous right now, yeah. right? And all what it is, takes what is, is one disgruntled kid. That's the issue. If you get one disgruntled kid starts, and a reporter starts. gets to him, then you open up the floodgates. Yeah. Yeah, what does Pat great. Fitzgerald because he's not that old, right? He's like oh. 50 or something. What is he? What is he? Sits he'll out take a year to he sits out TV? and ends up as an NFL assistant, probably. Yeah, he, he'd probably old. sit out for a year. He's in the uh college football hall of fame as a player. Yeah, he was a mm-hmm. great linebacker, Damn great linebacker at North, 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 North. extremely popular. Although, you know, as I said, they're four and 20 in the last two years after they after they won the West that year when they were. One of the most boring teams ever, but they managed to win the the mighty West. What's worse, the Big Ten West or the AL Central? What's worse? Wow, that's a, <laughs> for longevity, the well, Big Ten West. Ohio so, State, you know, is, at least tomorrow. Exists. Well, no, tomorrow, that's the East. I'm sorry. Tomorrow's East is good. That's your. That's Declan's question for the troops. Uh, what's uh, the AL Central or the Big Ten West? What is worse? <laughs> there so you now, go. now it's even worse with Wisconsin. Northwestern will be a walkover once again. Yep. All right, Nobody, Pat. Enjoy the 20. enjoy enjoy the All Star game tonight. And I will. Uh, I'll watch it. I generally watch it, but not. I'm not fixated on it like I used to be. That's for sure. Amen. A lot of a lot of guys that a lot of new guys on these two in these two lineups. Huh? Jung. Who the hell is Jung? I don't even know. Oh, you know? Young of, of Texas. Young. 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 Yeah. There's a there's a ton of good young talent now. Yeah. It's a lot. Of, yeah. It's fun actually. Yeah, we got good young talent at second base, except he can't catch the ball. That's yeah, okay. Yeah. Outside of that, outside of that minor his issue, a blind hand doesn't mean you have to rip him. <laughs> yes. All right, Jeff. All See right, there he is, uh, Royce Unchained, presented by our friends at Power Lodge and Miller Marine. It's a great time of year, especially if you're a you know a struggling Minnesota sports fan. Just breathe in that lake air, exhale. Maybe get on one of these Benningtons, courtesy of Power Lodge and Miller Marine Throttle Therapy. R and R, baby. That's exactly. Look at this. Like, like, imagine yourself oh, there out there on the water, and you know what? You're not. We're, you're not concerned about the Vikings' upcoming season. If you're a Twins fan, you don't even have to turn the ball game on. You just get out there, and you get in your Bennington, and you enjoy life. Do it now. You'll be glad that you listen to us. You see, we're always offering therapy, including sometimes get, getting away from the sports, driving you crazy. Power Lodge locations in Brainerd, Anami, and Ramsey, and Miller Marine in St. Cloud, PowerLodge.com, and MillerMarine.com.